Right? Like, what do you want? Okay. That's the hardest question to ask anybody. Right? Yeah. What do you want? Why do you want it? What's it going to do for you? How are you going to know when you have it? Right? These are questions. But if you really sit down and think about what your goals are, and I will guarantee you that they're all wrong anyway. Um, <laughs> that's, that's always fun. Oh, yeah. Here. Well, it's trying to figure out your priorities. Right. As to... So what we're doing is we're adapting you. So okay. you have to pick where you want to go. Uh, you're, you're at A. Do you want something to drain? You want to go to D. What's the B and C look like? That's my job to build you that bridge. Okay. So the session is you come in, we have a quick, quick like orientation. Hey, where are you at? How's it going? What do you want? And then basically you lay down. Um, I kind of mutter incoherently to myself a lot. Do a couple of posts, whatever. Right? I'm totally 100%. There have yeah. been so many times I'm like, who are you talking to? Yeah, like, are you talking to me? Are you asking me what I want? Or are you asking, like, the, like, world, like, the universe? You know, and it's weird. You know, and if anybody asks me, like, what happens during retraining or however you want to word it, I'm like, you kind of just have to be there because there's a lot that happens. There's a lot of questions. There's a lot of maneuvers. There's a lot of, you know, we're gonna, like, it's so strange. So like, like my doctor told like, me, so I strange. tried to go off antidepressants a long time ago. And then, you know, when I did, and I just felt like, oh, I'd just do better on them. But she's like, well, you know, think of it this way. If you had diabetes, you wouldn't beat yourself up if you took you needed to take insulin. So I thought, oh, okay, well, that made me put it that way and stuff. But I mean, if I don't have to take an antidepressant, I'd prefer not to, you know, because I know it does in certain aspects of my life. Oh, yeah. Let's yeah. Talk about that. Well, we won't. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so it would just be, I would, you know, I'd be very interested in that. Yeah. But first, I would have to. All right, uh, the brain training. You know me, my daughter went, and I also went along with her uh, just to see what it's like. So my sessions, four or five sessions, I lay on the table, it's comfortable, and he does his thing. He's just you know, muscle testing and poking, and he's asking questions of whatever. Is it this, 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 or this? And you lay there, and you just lay there, and that, that's it. Um, from, from like a... From a, from a clinical standpoint, it's a stimulus response test. Okay. It's the same mechanism that they use on the lie detector test because they've shown that people are completely unaware of themselves as a person. If you, take a sur if you ask a person to take a survey of who they are, an inventory of who they are, and then you follow them around for a week, they're completely wrong. Yeah. Who they said they are and who they actually are, these are two very different presentations. So. I have a degree in behavioral science, and I looked at that and said, well, what the heck, right? Like, what is it then that does work? Why is it that a person knows better but doesn't perform better? What's, what's driving the bus? And how do we get access to that? How do I get behind the curtain? So it's a stimulus response test that looks at the sympathetic nervous system the same way that if you were to tell a lie, there's a part of your brain that's dormant most of the time if your expectation matches your experience. So if what you're perceiving matches what you've expected to see, your brain stays quiet. But there's a part of your brain that when something goes different, your brain wakes up and says, whoa, that's different, and you get a sympathetic spike, right? And that sympathetic spike shows up as a momentary muscle weakness, right? Because it causes vasoconstriction, a little bit less blood flow to the muscle, your brain gets distracted, and all of a sudden you get a little dip in your muscle strength. So, Sort of like if you're driving on the highway, you're cruising along, blah, 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 chatting, radios blaring, and all of a sudden you see, you see brake lights, you're like, oh, what's that, right? Or like you drive on your way from work to home a thousand times, and all of a sudden you're like, ooh, what's that? There's an animal, right? Or there's a raccoon. Oh, look, yard sale. That looks amazing. I wonder if they have stuff in my size. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, anyway, but so when I, when that part of your brain wakes up, and what we can do is I can, I can say a statement, and your brain will either agree or disagree with that. We're not talking the part that you think with. We're not talking yeah. about your mask. Yeah. We're talking like all the behind the scenes yeah. stuff. So we're, it's a series of it's a series of rapid provocations, right? And I can drill all the way down. So okay, well it's animal, vegetable, mineral, right? So I, I <laughs> um, well, and, and Jen, you you sat in on a couple of sessions with your daughter, right? So you could because 
she is amazing. She's helped me a lot with all different kinds of marketing stuff and just framing things and how to make it consumer friendly and all this stuff. Because I'm a scientist, I live in a laboratory, right? So she's like, well, let me sit in on one and, and I'll give you my perspective. I'm like, fantastic. And then she's like, yeah, it's a bunch of weird shit. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> like, I have no fucking idea. Like, what's going on? We call it natural health care. Yeah. Right. Yes. I just say, I often say, I, I feel bad calling diabetes a disease. Yeah. 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 Over 20 some people, many of them are my own clients, family as well, but clients too. And I'll even offer because my my clientele is a good 30 to 45 minutes away from his office, so it's a bit of an investment for them to get to him. But I'm like, I'll sit there and I'll say, you know, they might be a little bit the same thing. Oh, chiropractors, I said, just like anything, there are good ones and there are not so good ones, and then there's there's him. But what I was going to say is, I, I have, when people say, well, what does he do? And, and it's hard to <laughs> explain what it is. But I even will offer up with my clients to come to the first session, if, if they're all right with that, just so that I can sit there and try to hear what it is that he is, is speaking about and, and trying to explain within them. He does his adjustments and does whatever he might do. And then we'll walk out and kind of regroup so that I can continue to help them and try to remember what everything you said. But I've actually come in with two of my clients who are both psychiatrists themselves, so doctors of their, in their own right, and they walk out like, I feel amazing for what just happened. Like, I mean, this doesn't even make sense. And so, anyway, I was just going to say that I have countless, countless stories, both from my own personal self and many of my clients that have maybe come for one thing, RA, MS, whatever it might be, and for vertigo, you name it, and they've all been helped, and, they, and likewise, they'll come back and they'll go, oh, and I can also, like, cross my leg with no problem, and mm -hmm. my head doesn't hurt anymore, and I didn't even go for that, you know, that so it's happened just to me like too, actually. a million different things that can be helped. I'm a personal trainer, so I mostly work with people who have hip replacements, knee replacements, have been in bad car accidents, they were this, that, whatever. And, um, you know, some of them, it's, it's taken me years to talk them into coming to see him. And others, they go, I'm desperate, I'm just going to try it. And no matter what, they always come away very happy and still come to see him. So. Yeah, when you guys uh, have ever gone into the office and he asks you, like, hey, like, what's going on with you? And do you ever think, I don't know, you tell me what you're <laughs> Yeah, actually, yeah. I'm like, well, you already know. Why are we even yeah, having exactly this conversation? Right <laughs> you know what? That's actually, if I can tell you, that was a that was a coachable moment for me because I can look at somebody and be like, yeah, I get it, right? But I got somebody, I had so many people like, well, aren't you going to even ask me what's wrong? And I was like, all right, Deborah. <laughs> Sparring match. Gloves off. Here we go. First off, you're constipated. Oh my gosh, how did you know? <laughs> you really want to be? Well, I will unpack that right here in front of you. I think that's what you did. You can unpack that. Right. Ah. So I'm like, constipated. Here's 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 three different ways you're depressed. They said these are the troubles that you have. This foot hurts. You're there, and, and just boom, 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 pick everything apart and lay it all on the table. She's like. Well, half of that stuff I don't even think is true because I haven't. I was like, all right, well, let's go. Bing, bing, bing. Ow, ooh, ow, ow. How do you always know? Ow, the wrong, ow, it hurts so bad. All right, good. We good? Click, click, click. Boom. How's it? Oh, it feels better. Next time she comes in, she's like, I can poop. I'm like, yeah. You're welcome. So what's going on with you today? Oh, I don't know. Maybe you should, just tell, maybe you should just tell me. Right. So, so for me, like, I realized um, that's like a very adversarial approach to healthcare. Like, all right, sit down. Here's where all this is gonna go. I'm like, I'm sorry, what? Um, so for me, like, and I've had people ask me, like, so how's it going? They're like, well, you're the doctor. I thought you should know. It's like, oh, that's, that's how we're gonna play it. Cool. Let's run that one. So, Shiloh, I am very intrigued because because exactly what you said. You had several ride-alongs, right? Let, let, and so, what each of you has not had 
is the experience that each other has had, right? So you, however, have been on several different appointments. How similar would you say that those appointments are to each other? Yeah, other than they're not explainable to the layperson. Um, but no, um, every time I thought I took him a challenging case, the next one I brought him was even more challenging, and he was very he succeeded successfully with it. And every time I kept thinking, oh, I know what he's going to say this time, or I know what he's going to do this time, because the case was a little bit similar to the other one was still totally different. The one that stands out in my mind the most, and I wasn't here on this particular part of the visit, but a client of mine, she had, I came for her first session. We talked for over an hour with Dr. Danny about what was going on and did an adjustment. And we walked out to the desk, and actually she is one of the physicians. Walked out to the desk, and I said, so what do you think of that boy? I've never brought a doctor to another doctor's office. <laughs> and she just looked at me, and she's like, and she almost like collapsed at his front desk. <laughs> because she was like, I, I, can't, I can't even explain right now. I feel light, and I feel like I can move, and I don't even know what just happened, and my head's spinning, whatever. But she's like, I know I feel better. So she's okay. So she, I continued to train her. She came back um, three or four more visits, and each time she was getting better and better. She had had back and hip issues for a long time, and shoulder issues, bad posture, a lot from just sitting. Anyway, then she, we were doing really well. She got in a car accident, jammed her hip really bad, and then it was like you know three steps backwards. So she was doing better, better, better. Then she came in. She goes, you know what? The last time I feel like he over adjusted me I think like over corrected and I kind of feel worse this day and I said okay well we'll tell him let him know and she's like she goes I think I know what it is you know how he checks our feet you turn your head you turn your feet you turn your head whatever she's like he doesn't know that when I was nine I broke my ankle and when it healed my foot has always been turned out and I said oh yeah if he's trying to get both your feet straight let him know so she's like, I got him this time. She goes in, she's like, just so you know, and she's 59 at this point, 50 years since his accident. She says, my foot turns out, it doesn't want to be straight, so if you're trying to look at that, this isn't gonna work. She says, she's like, I got him this time, I think. He goes, oh, get up. Didn't do an adjustment, walked her right over to the other room and said, we're gonna put this cold laser on your ankle. Five minutes. She's like, okay. So she sits there, she's like, I don't feel anything, I don't hear anything, it's not doing anything. Get, comes back five minutes later, gets up, and he's like, okay. And she's like, thinking, that's it. You're off 45 minutes for this, what was that? So she starts to walk and she's like, I had mobility in my ankle that I didn't even know I was supposed to have or that I was missing. Later on that evening, she goes to a movie with her partner She's like, next thing I know, I get up as I usually need to. I run up the stairs, or run down the stairs first off, go to the restroom, and then take the stairs two at a time, coming back up to the theater. And her partner looks at her like, what is wrong with you? And she's like, I just feel like I can do it. I just, I feel like I can do it now. And it completely changed everything. So she's like, here an injury that he said didn't heal 50 years prior. Sorry, Trump's here 20 years. But <laughs> um, completely just changed everything about the rest of how her body worked. And, and so she's a major believer. She herself comes from brain training. She's brought her daughters. She's referred many friends. She's been helped countless people just even after another. So it's amazing how long something can go on in the body and still be fixed. 2005, that's when I was, that's when, back when I met you. Right. Years ago. Um, so I've been a trainer now over 25 something years, ex-military, now own a gym, uh, do personal training part time, but chiropractic is what kept me in the game of Spartan races, skateboarding, um, mixed martial arts, and I mean I've snowboarded, herniated L3, L4, L5, and he's kept me in the game, and I'm just turned 41. So. I think I'm still doing pretty good.
They don't look 41. <laughs> well, that's good. Yeah, I know. Yeah. 